It's cooking with Cuisinart. Great recipes from master chefs. Now, one of America's greatest chefs, Hubert Keller, from Fleur de Lis in San Francisco and Las Vegas. The Burger Bar in Las Vegas and St. Louis. And Sleek Steakhouse in St. Louis. And now, today's recipe. Prime rib is a fabulous piece of meat. Some restaurants actually build a reputation around great prime ribs. Today, I really want to show you how to make a prime rib so you can really impress your guests. And I promise you, it never goes out of style. We're going to prepare a rub. I have some uh, garlic. I have some kosher salt. I have some paprika, some black pepper, a little bit of olive oil, and some herb de Provence. I will transfer everything in a little food processor. So again, the garlic, the salt, so everything goes together right in here. The paprika, also the black pepper, herb de Provence, and a little bit of oil oil just to bring everything nicely together. And let's just mix everything and let's chop the garlic. And you can see it really comes nicely, nicely together. I have my prime rib. You see, I left a little bit fat in it. I didn't trim it off completely. I want to make sure that fat really roasts and protects that beautiful piece of meat. I'm going to use my hands actually to do that. Let's just go into the bowl and let's take out all that mixture. And oh my God, that really, really, you can smell it with all those herbs and the garlic. It's absolutely great. Kind of a lot. The fun part is just to get it on, on the meat, and then we're gonna turn it around. We wanna make sure, really, we get it on all the sides. I wanna make sure you really rub it in nicely, right, so that really, that piece of meat actually picks it up, and then later on, of course, the result will be at the moment that you're gonna be serving it. So, once I have that, we're gonna tie up that piece of meat with some string, so that basically, it's, it sits nicely together, and it's gonna be easy easier later on when it's going to be roasting. So, like I said, I'm just going to lift it up and put it tight over here, make it really tight, and you see you just bring the string around just like that. And so we give them about four, four times we're going to do the same thing. You make it pretty tight. And so basically when that's ready, I recommend to put that in the refrigerator. You can even actually put them into a plastic film wrap so that really all the flavors are sealed and pressed against the meat. And then you can put that in the refrigerator at least an hour and so that really that flavoring really soaks into the meat. So once we are, we are that, basically that's what we need. So you see I have my roast. Again, I would actually put that now in the refrigerator, leave it in there for about an hour, and then after that when it's ready to be roasted, we're taking it out and we're just transferring in a roasting pan. I really like the type of roasting pan so that the meat actually roasts from all around and doesn't cook in its own fat. The fat actually drips down and I will have an oven ready at 450 degrees. I'm going to cook it for about 30 minutes, then I lower the heat to about 350 degrees. You might want to cook the meat for 13 minutes per pound or even a little bit more if you like your meat a little bit more cooked. And of course you always can check the internal temperature. What you want to achieve is about 125, 130 degrees and you just make sure you basically have it in the center of the meat so you get the right reading. And once you hit that temperature, of course, you pull it out, you let it sit, and by letting it sit, it's very important, at least give them about 10 minutes so the juices in the meat in the center are really distributed totally evenly and you have a perfect, perfect prime rib. Another option actually, instead of putting it on the rack, you can actually sear the prime rib just using a large pan, a little bit of oil in it, and just sear all the different sides so that you're building a nice crust around the prime rib. And then you put them on the rack and then it goes in the oven. So I have one actually which is ready, roasted. So let me move that out. And of course, what I want really, you can see how the drippings and the juices on the bottom, I will make a great sauce with it. But before that, I'm just gonna take it out. And like I was explaining earlier, we wanna let that meat rest for at least 10 to 15 minutes on like in a warm environment. So I'm just gonna cover it up. 
with aluminum foil and that's the moment that actually the temperature keeps on rising still about 10 degrees while the meat is sitting over here and then I'm gonna transfer that over there and making the sauce but for the sauce first I need some chopped shallots so I'm just gonna use the same little food processor that I had earlier for the rubbing mix it and just gonna chop very quickly all right and you see how fast and how easy that went and so once I have that we're just gonna take everything over the stove and I will be finishing the sauce all right so here I have my roasting pan with uh, all the juices and all the flavors and all these uh, meat particles in here and what I will do now is just adding the shallots into it and I just want to make sure that everything is absorbed and more the juices are reducing more the flavors are concentrate and that's the whole idea by reducing those juices all right so now at that stage I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of flour all over it and that's actually will be the binder for my sauce so I really want to stir in all that flour with my shallots now comes the time then I'm gonna pour some Madeira over it to dissolve everything and followed by the brown stock okay so now I'm just gonna bring everything back to a simmer so now of course I want to adjust the seasoning the reason why I'm adding the salt right now is that the, the sauce has reduced enough so that's the moment that I want to adjust the seasoning if I would have put the salt earlier and then it reduces it would be actually over salted so put some fresh pepper in and I'm just gonna make sure I stir that in our sauce has a beautiful color and lots of flavors okay my meat has been resting here now for like about 10 to 15 minutes I will remove now the little strings of it and you see how nice and golden brown that piece of meat is and the rubbing still sticks on it and of course has flavored that meat entirely so once I have that of course I'm gonna start on slicing it up now you see how beautiful it is and how nice and pink and since it has rested like I mentioned you can see it's pink all across so now of course we're gonna cut a couple of nice slices and then I will transfer everything on my tray and of course here I have some beautiful roasted vegetables and I need and of course the sauce that we made together I'm just gonna sauce it over and that's gonna wrap up that fabulous roast so I'm just gonna put it over here and you can see how beautiful it smells and how delicious it is and so here we have it a fabulous uh, prime rib roasted perfectly pink on those vegetables and you probably will never go back to one of those prime rib restaurants once you try it at home and your friends are just gonna love you for that